All right, so today we are testing this. Uh, this is a new product from Noctua, which aims to improve the thermal performance of some ITX PC builds. Essentially, if you have a PC case with a cooler height limit of around 40 and 80 millimeters, then this is potentially something that you should be interested in. You can think of this simply as a fan duct. Instead of having a gap between the side panel and your CPU cooler, this fan duct ensures that 100% of the air that's being sucked into the cooler is fresh, cool air from outside of the case. That's as opposed to potentially recycling the warmer air that's within the case which is a problem if there is a gap between the side panel and the cooler. So cases like the Dan A4S FX, the Ghost S1, the Skyreach 4 Mini, Node 202, K39, all of the Velka cases as well, these are all cases where this mod could be potentially very very useful. However this fan duct is only really relevant if you're using a CPU cooler with a 92mm fan mounted on top of the heatsink. When it comes to Noctua that means either the NHL9 or the NHL 9 by 65 Now these are great little coolers, but most of the time they're not the most powerful options that these small cases can fit. For example, in the Dan A4S FX where you have 47 mils of total cooler clearance, is it better to use the 37 mil tall NHL9 with a 10 mil fan duct, or just use a 47 mil cooler to begin with? The biggest one which will fit in this case is the Alpenfoam Blackridge. Well, that is a comparison which we will be testing. Now, of course, a product like this cannot be a one size fits all solution since there are a bunch of different ITX cases out there all which have different cooler heights and potentially different gaps between the cooler and the side panel. For this reason you have a range of different thicknesses at your disposal with this new kit from Noctua. So there are eight foam spaces in total, three, four, five, six and seven millimeter pads and then two ten millimeter pads. The really cool thing here is that even if you need to fill like an eight or nine mil gap in your case even though those pads aren't included you can just combine two of the included pads by stacking them together. The material here is a reasonably dense EVA foam, very similar if not identical to what Noctua coolers actually come packaged in. It's forgiving enough to provide some compression but dense enough to create a nice seal. Installation is also super easy. Firstly you need to replace the fan screws with these taller hand tightened ones that are included in the box. Then you need to work out what sized foam spaces you'll need which can be done with some quick math and some trial and error. So take whatever cooler height your case supports, subtract the cooler height that you're installing and then add a couple of millimeters to whatever is left over. For our Dan A4 SFX here I found that 12 millimeters in total, so stacking the 7 and 5 millimeter pads together, that gave me a completely closed seal against the side panel without putting any bulge or pressure on it. Now only if you're stacking multiple pads together that's where you need to install these little support beams. These slide right over the screws that we just installed, then you'll need to trim these back so that they don't extend beyond the pad. I'd recommend using a pair of side cutters, doing a really rough cut and then cutting them back a few more millimeters from the top. This way you have a bit of compression leeway against the side panel. In the end it's probably the most premium looking DIY fan duct solution that you could probably come up with and yeah I think this does look better than some of the 3D printed solutions that I've seen out there as well. If anything it gives our tiny little CPU cooler here a bit more of a high performance look. But does it actually result in better performance? Well, here with an 11600K running at 90 watts continuously in Blender, we've got all six cores averaging out to 89 degrees C after 20 minutes without the fan duct. With the fan duct installed, on the other hand, we drop about 5 degrees, getting us closer to some more comfortable thermal performance. Now, 5 degrees isn't anything crazy, but for what is probably one of the most simple cooling mods that you could ever do, it's 100% worth the $13 or so that Noctua are charging here. So, a 5 degree improvement there, that's not bad at all, given how easy and quick the mod is and how cheap it is as well. That's enough to make a decent improvement in your fan curve and run a potentially quieter system, or maybe you could run a higher power limit and get slightly higher performance. But how does this compare to just simply running a larger CPU cooler? You see, the more of a gap that you're closing here with these foam spaces, potentially the more effective the thermal improvement is going to be, because that way you're overcoming a lot more air that would otherwise be recycled back into the cooler. At the same time, if you're using like a 15 millimeter fan duct in your build, that's probably at the point where you just want to use a bigger CPU cooler instead. So for the Dan A4S FX here, we can actually install the 47 mil tall Alpen 
foam black ridge. This cooler was specifically designed for this case and it pretty much maxes out every last millimeter that we have left. At the same time, memory clearance does need to be considered as does whether this will actually fit on the motherboard that you're installing. If you have a really tall IO shroud, for example, or one of those stacked M.2 slots, chances are this probably will not fit. However, if you can get it to fit, we're looking at a pretty decent drop in temperatures here versus the NHL 9 with a fan duct. So there's no doubt that these fan ducts are worth using, but if you can just fit a bigger CPU cooler in your case in the first place, that's likely going to be first preference. Clearly though, these foam spaces, they do work. So props and Octua for solving a problem might not be a huge improvement, but I mean, a five degree improvement, that's not bad at all for what is basically $13. So if you do currently use the NHL 9 or the L9 by 65 in your build and you cannot fit a bigger CPU cooler in your build currently, then yeah, definitely check these out. I will have them listed down below. Other than that, hopefully you found this interesting. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.